This all started a week ago, when I lost my job and I was running behind on bills. I lived in a simple house and that job was all that held my life together. After a night of drinking and watching TV, I started looking for a new job. Most of them looked boring, just 9 to 5 office jobs, but one caught my eye. It was an ad to the side of the screen that read, High paying jobs for hire. This isn't just your normal 9 to 5 job. In desperation, I clicked on the shady ad. Slowly but surely, a new website loads with multiple links to different jobs with different descriptions. Deep web jobs. House sitting. $100 per shift. Stay in a camera room and watch all the rooms. Keep the house safe. Rules and link. Seems easy enough. I thought to myself, God, do I regret that. Crop harvest. $150 per field. Harvest a field of corn. Tools are provided. The rules and link. Reading down all of the jobs, the house sitting seemed the easiest, so I clicked on the link, eager for that $100. On the screen, a sign-up sheet popped up, asking for my email. I typed it in quickly and I was met with the message. We hope to see you soon. Satisfied with that, I hopped in bed and I turned off the lights. I started to drift off when I hear a buzz from my phone. Irritated, I get up and I check my phone. A new email. I thought to myself. I clicked on the notification. Your application has been accepted. Thank you for applying to the house sitting job. You will stay at the house from 12am until 4am, and you must follow these rules. Your money will arrive at 6am after your shift. Always, no matter what you hear or see, stay in the camera room. Either don't bring your phone or if you do, do not turn it on, even if you get a notification. I will not email you during your shift. Make sure to bring something that can play music fairly loudly. Arrive at 12 or a little before 12. If you arrive past 12, do not enter the house and send me an email. From 12 until 1, you are allowed to roam the house but make sure to be in the upstairs camera room by 1. Turn all the lights off, lock the doors and close the blinds. From 1 until 2, watch the cameras. If you see a man in the living room watching TV, turn that camera off until you hear the TV turn off from downstairs. Ignore any sounds you hear around the house. If you feel anything touch you, stop moving and close your eyes until the feeling goes away. From 2 until 3, open the blinds in the camera room. If you hear a voice from the window, do not look at them. The conversation will be normal and once they say goodbye, it is safe to close the blinds. This event can happen at any time in the hour. If you see a woman cooking in the kitchen, you have a blue button on your desk that turns on a loud sound in the kitchen. Press and hold that button until the woman disappears. From 3 until 3.33, Turn on your music device as loud as possible. Cover your ears, close your eyes, and ignore any sounds or movements around you. If the music stops, make any sound of your own to drown out what is happening around you. After 3.33, you are allowed to roam the house until 4. Do not leave before 4, and do not leave more than 5 minutes after 4. If any rules are not completed correctly, hide under the desk and do not move until 4. That is all. Your shift starts tomorrow night at 471 Pedersen Drive. Sincerely, Mr. Salazar. 
I must have read that email ten times over, thinking that this was a prank or something. No way do I actually have to follow these crazy rules. I thought to myself, entranced at how specific the rules were. I put my phone back down to charge and I went to sleep, still confused by that email. All I could do the next day was think about what that email said. The man in the living room, the woman in the kitchen, conversation with the person in the window. It all seemed too crazy to be true, but I couldn't help but find myself 15 minutes before 12 with an old iPod in my pocket, standing at 471 Patterson Drive. I entered the house. It had a sort of old but still lovable vibe to it. The house was dusty but the kitchen and living room were spotless. I made my way upstairs and at the end of the long hallway stood the camera room. It was barren and small, with nothing but a chair, a camera monitor, and a couple of windows in it. I sat down in the chair. Man, I hoped that this was worth it. It wasn't. Looking at the computer's clock, it read 12.03 AM. I have one hour to look around the house. First I head back to the living room. I closed the blinds, locked the doors, and I turned the lights off. I repeated that for all the rooms and at 12.56 I was back to the camera room. As soon as it hit 1 AM, I felt a sudden dread telling me to get up and leave right now. I turned on all of the cameras, and on the back of my neck, it felt as if a feather was resting on it. I froze. Keep calm, Chris. Keep calm. I closed my eyes as I remembered the rules. It felt like hours, that feather tickling the back of my neck, but I held out not moving and keeping my eyes closed. The feather went away. I opened my eyes relieved, and I heard behind me slow, coordinated footsteps. I whipped around and the footsteps went away, and a slow chuckle came from the camera speaker. The man was watching TV. The TV was lit up with some cooking show and the man was chuckling while watching the show. I turned that camera off, and I hoped that I had done it fast enough. The sound from the TV echoed up the stairs, chilling me to the bone. What the hell is this place? I thought to myself, feeling queasy. And how is it only 1.20? The next 20 minutes were as creepy as can be. Unknown sounds bounced around the house, the man laughing at the TV, watching all the cameras until the silence hit me hard. The TV had been turned off, and dread had fell upon me again. The noise from the TV had been a constant for the past 20 minutes, but now that it was off, the silence felt threatening. I slowly turned on the camera and I found the room to be empty. I sighed in relief. For what felt like an eternity, my eyes darted around the cameras, on edge until the clock made a quiet beep and it turned to 2 AM. I rose from my chair and I opened the blinds revealing the pitch black lawn outside. I sat back down as the clanging of pots and pans ringed in my ears. I looked down at the blue button beside the monitor and then at the lady, now cooking black eggs in the kitchen. As I was about to press the button, Hi Chris. A woman's voice came from the window. I froze, gluing my eyes to the monitor, forcing myself not to look at the window. Hi, how was your day? My voice was shaky. It was obvious that I was scared. I was just strolling around the neighborhood. I saw that you were here and I just wanted to say hi. The window that she was talking to me through was high enough up the ground to need a large ladder to get to. How was your day? 
My day, it was fine, thanks. The woman in the kitchen started to get louder. Okay, well, I have to go. It was nice to meet you. It was nice to meet you too. Bye. I wanted to get up. I wanted to just close the blinds and never hear her voice again. But something just told me that I should not get up. Wow, you're a smart one. I thought that would get you. Maybe next time. Goodbye. I waited a few seconds. The last thing that I wanted to see was the face of that lady talking to me. So I waited until I was sure that she wasn't there anymore. And then I closed the blinds. Once that ordeal was over, I realized that the lady in the kitchen was gone, even though I never pressed the button. Oh no, no! I thought. I had broken one of the rules, and it was only 2.30. Now I'm sitting under the desk, typing this out on my iPod, and there is a lady with a ragged apron on, walking in circles around the room. I am scared to make any noise. So please, if you see an ad for dark web jobs, don't click it. Update. It's 4.30 now. I made it out of the house and I'm safe. My left leg is hurt a little, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me tell you what happened. The lady from the kitchen walked around the room, making soft groans and drooling everywhere. I kept as silent as I could. Freezing time, she turned in my direction. A small beep came from my desk, notifying me that it had turned 3 a.m. The lady in the room melted into the floorboards, screaming a scream of the utmost agony and pain. What I was supposed to do at this point was turn on the music of my iPod, close my eyes and cover my ears. But hiding under the desk, I didn't know if I still had to do that. I waited and waited and silence was all I could find. Until the walls and floors of the house started to contort. The house shifted and moved into what looked like faces popping out of the walls. The only description of the sound I can think of is a scream of terror itself. I couldn't take it anymore. My mind told me to get up, to run, to get out as fast as I can. But I knew that I couldn't. I closed my eyes and I turned the music on. The screams were drowned out and it seemed almost calming. But in the back of my mind, I knew what was happening around me. The music blared loudly and my eyes stayed glued shut. Then the music turned off. I opened my eyes and the house was normal again. Shakily, I stood up and I looked at the clock. 3.34 I got back onto the desk and I lay there terrified. But nothing happened and I was sitting there for 35 minutes until the final beep from the clock came, telling me that I could finally leave. I got up, walked down the hallway, down the stairs to the front door, and finally, the sweet cool air of the night hit my face. And in that moment, I felt a relief that was almost euphoric. I walked home and I picked up my phone. But when I went to email Mr. Salazar, his email was gone. The website was gone. And there was no trace of him at all. I tried to fall asleep, but I couldn't get the faces out of my head. The look they had can't be explained. I don't know if I'm going to get my money, but at this point, I don't care. I just want to never go back to that house again. Update. It's 6am now. A package somehow appeared at my front door, and inside was $80 and a letter. The letter is as follows. You can't escape. Hello again, Chris. 
I see that you showed up for your first shift this morning. I appreciate that, but during your shift, you broke one of the rules. I've taken $20 out of your pay because of that. I'm pretty sure you were already aware, but I can tell you don't want to go back. Most people don't. And I'm here to say that you can't escape. By entering that house, you pretty much signed your soul away. No matter what you do, you will always be at that house by 12. That is all. Sincerely, Mr. Salazar. My sleep last night was horrible. I couldn't stop thinking about what had happened on my first shift. The whole day I stayed in bed, terrified for midnight to come. But it had to come eventually. 11.57 I begged that nothing would happen to me. 11.58 I put my iPod in the trash. 11.59 I lay in bed and I closed my eyes. I feel pressure on my feet and my soft bed disappears from under me. I open my eyes and I find myself inside that cursed house again with my iPod and a printed paper of the rules in my hand. What? How was it possible? I think to myself. I ran to the door, slamming my fist against it, wanting a way out, but it was to no avail. I could not leave. I defeatedly walked up the stairs and I sat in the camera room chair. I sat there crying for an hour until one o'clock came. And with it, came the man laughing at the TV. I turned the camera off and I continued to sob, not caring about the sounds around me. But then I felt a hand wrap around my neck. I froze and closed my eyes and I tried to control myself. The grip closed tighter and tighter until I could barely breathe. And then it finally left me alone. I gasped for air and I grabbed the printed paper of rules given to me at the start of my shaft. I looked at the printed sheet of rules and at the bottom was a handwritten message from Mr. Salazar himself. Good luck. I looked back up to the cameras and I composed myself. Okay Chris, you can do this. You've already been here once. Pull it together. I listened, not hearing the TV anymore. I listened, not hearing the TV anymore. I turned the camera on and the clock let out a small beep. It had turned to two o'clock. I stood up to open the blinds, but I hesitated. Did I really want to talk to her again? Regardless, I pushed the thought away. And I opened the blinds to be met with a face only insane people would call a woman. It looked as if she hadn't eaten once in her life. Her skin looked like it was airtight to her bones and she had no meat in her body. Her smile was literally ear to ear. Her skin sagged down at least two feet. And her eye sockets had large, black bloodshot eyes with tiny, beady yellow pupils. Hello again, Chris. I closed the blinds as quickly as I could and I went to hide under the desk. But the desk is just a block. No space to hide under. I don't know what to do. I hear slow footsteps coming up the stairs. God, the doorknob is turning. The door is locked. Oh, thank God I remembered to lock it. She is screeching from behind the door. She's slamming her hands on it. It's only a matter of time until she breaks the whole door down. What do I do? Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy and recently I got laid off by my horrible boss. And I found a website for deep web jobs and I applied for house sitting. I also recently read at Chris's shifts and I think we applied for the same job. Mr. Salazar emailed me something along the same lines. I'll paste his email here. Your application has been accepted. Thank you for applying to the house sitting job. You will stay at the house from 12am until 4am. 
and you must follow these rules. Your money will arrive at 6 a.m. after your shift. Always, no matter what you hear or see, stay in the bedroom. Either don't bring your phone or if you do, do not turn it on even if you get a notification. I will not email you during your shift. Arrive at 12 or a little before 12. If you arrive past 12, do not enter the house and send me an email. From 12 until 1, you are allowed to roam the house but make sure to be in the upstairs bedroom by 1. Turn all the lights off, lock the doors and close the blinds. This can happen any time during the night. If you hear loud music from the camera room, put on the hazmat suit that we have provided. Enter the camera room, walk to the security desk, do not interact with the security guard, and turn off the music from the iPod on the desk. Make sure to do this fairly quickly. From 1 until 2, clean up all the clothes in the bedroom and hang them up in the closet. If any clothes have bloodstains, put them in the trash quickly. Make the bed, and if there are more than three sheets, throw away any extra. If you hear a knock at the window, hide under the bed until the entity has entered and left the room. From 2 until 3, put the hazmat suit back on and walk into the downstairs area. If there's a man watching TV, turn the TV off and ignore what the man does. If there is a woman cooking in the kitchen, then turn off the stove and ignore what she does. There is a bathroom connected to the bedroom. If you hear the shower turn on, knock on the door three times, no more, no less. If the showering stops, it was done correctly. From 3 until 3.33, lay in bed and close your eyes. Do not fall asleep. Make sure to pull the blankets up to your neck and make sure that they stay there. From 3.34 until 4, your shift is complete and you are allowed to roam the house until 4. Do not leave before 4, and do not leave more than 5 minutes after 4. That is all. Your shift starts tomorrow night at 471 Pedersen Drive. Sincerely, Mr. Salazar. I don't know what this means, but having read Chris's post, I think I'm ready and I can survive. I'm going to type this out after my shift is over. If I survive. I entered the house and I looked around, just as Chris had said. It looked old, but you could live in it just fine. The kitchen and the living room were in pristine condition, and it looked like they were bought yesterday. I walked up the stairs and I walked down the hallway, and I turned right just before the camera room, entering the bedroom. The room had a king-sized bed in it, with clothes and bedsheets scattered around the room. There is a door off to the side of the room which I assumed was the bathroom. The nightstand next to the bed held a small digital clock, and a printed paper of the instructions. The clock gave a small beep signaling my time had started. I bent down and I picked up a couple of pieces of clothes, varying from bras to underwear to hats. I hung them up in the closet and I started to get bored, until I found a grey striped shirt with a large crimson stain on it. I immediately threw it in the large garbage can in the corner of the room and I continued with my work. I was picking out the last pieces of clothing, ready to make the bed when I heard five slow, hard knocks in the window across from my bed. My blood ran cold. I dropped the clothing that I was holding, and I crawled through to the small space under the bed. It was silent until the door slammed open, and a woman, fitting the description that Chris gave, entered the room. I know you're in here. You can't escape. I'll find you eventually. I held my breath for as long as I could. She started to get angry and slammed her frail hands on the nearest things around her. She screamed in anger, wanting only to trap me in this house. Eventually she left and slammed the door behind her. I got up from under the bed and I quickly collected the sheets and I made the bed 
making sure to throw away the extra two sheets. Only 2.45? I thought. And then came the loud music from the room next door. I calmly but scaredly put on my hazmat suit and I opened the door. I cautiously stepped out into the hallway and I saw down the stairs a man watching TV. I opened the door to the camera room slowly and I saw a man, if you can even call it that, sitting in the chair. He had rotten dead skin and he sat with such a hunch that his back was almost at a 90 degree angle. I walked over to the desk and I spotted the iPod. Keep calm, Chris. Keep calm. The guard repeated to himself. I gave him a look of sympathy as he stared up at me with terrified eyes. I grabbed the iPod and I turned the music off. Chris covered his ears and kept repeating that same phrase. I walked back to the bedroom just in time for the clock to give a small beep to turn to 2am. Let's be honest, Chris is dead. The house had trapped his soul and it forced him to work there for eternity. The reason I signed up was to find a way to release these trapped souls, and I think that the entity has something to do with all of this. I kept the hazmat suit on and I walked down the stairs. The man was sitting on the couch watching a cooking show on the TV. I walked over and I looked at the man. He had polished hair, combed over to the side like he was a rich person. He had a nice suit, tie, and pants on, but his face looked like it had been rotting for years. The bone was showing in more than three places, and I'm pretty sure that I saw a glob of skin fall from his face. His laughs were hoarse and deep like he didn't have any vocal cords. I turned the TV off and the man froze mid-laugh, and then melted into the couch seams. I shuddered and I returned to my place upstairs. I entered and took about 10 minutes to take the hazmat suit off, only to be met with the sound of a warm shower. I came closer to the bathroom door, and I put my ear against it. I heard a lady humming lightly. I knocked three times. The humming and water stopped immediately after the third knock. It felt unsettling how quickly it became silent. But faint off in the distance, I heard sizzling eggs. I quickly put the hazmat suit on and I rushed down the stairs. The woman was cooking black eggs. She was like the man watching TV. Her apron and hat were pristine, spotless, but her skin was, although in better shape than the man's, rotting. I reached for the oven dial, but I stopped. Please, please keep it on, please. The woman repeated with a soft voice. Regardless, I turned the dial to zero. The woman melted and I returned back to the bedroom. I thought this was going to be easy, but now I know what Chris felt. It is insanely scary being inside this house. 2.58, I pull the bed sheets up. 2.59, I get into bed. 3 o'clock, I close my eyes and I get comfortable. The bed is surprisingly soft, and I feel as if I could fall asleep even if a train was running right above me. I thought about everything else I had seen that night, and that scared me awake for a few minutes, but it was a constant struggle to stay awake and conscious, but I knew that I would become like Chris if I fell asleep. Finally, the clock beeped and the bed felt like it became stone, and I climbed out confused. I now had free time to walk around the house until 4. I checked in the camera room and Chris had disappeared. I waited patiently for 4 to come and when it did, I went home and I started plotting a plan. Like many of you suggested to Chris, tomorrow I'm going to bring a knife and a lighter. I'm going to try to stab the entity and hopefully I can survive. 
I'll update you all again tomorrow. Wish me luck. Oh, Jesus. The plan did not work as planned. I'm hurt, but I survived. Let me tell you what happened. Just because many of you were asking, I went back during the day, but the house wasn't there. Like many of you proposed, I took with me a bear trap and a large knife. I entered the house and I looked around. It looked the same and I placed the bear trap right outside the bedroom door. Again, like you guys suggested, I tried unplugging the TV before the man appears. But when I went to pull it out, it was like the cable was a part of the wall. It was completely stuck and I couldn't manage to unplug it. The night started and it went as normal as it could. But while I was in the middle of cleaning up the clothes, I noticed that the bed had no hiding space under it. I had to come up with a new plan on the spot. My plan was while I was sleeping from 3 to 3.33 and the entity was above me, I would take my knife and stab her. But now it looked like I wouldn't even make it to then. I hear the knocking on the door. The entity signals that it's coming and I panic. Where would I hide? I grab the knife and I crawl to a small space behind the door. I would have to stab her as she came in or as she was hit by the trap. I hear a step. The entity comes closer. Another. I tightened my grip on the knife. Again. A bead of sweat drips down my face. I hear a clang. The sound of the bear trap closing and a high-pitched demonic scream after it. I open the door and with all my might, I swing at the entity in front of me. The knife slides clean into one of the entity's eyes and black goo starts spurting from the wound. The entity screams, revealing at least 100 sets of tiny sharp teeth. It clenches my hand in its mouth and I scream out in pain. Me and the entity fall over on top of each other and roll around for a while. I got scratched a couple of times and I stabbed her a couple of times. But finally, I pinned her down and I stabbed until I knew without a shadow of a doubt that she was dead. I stood up, my arm bleeding profusely and I used a piece of clothing to wrap my wound. I didn't care about the rules anymore. I just killed the thing running this place. I sat down on the bed and I rested for a few moments. Throughout the rest of the night, nothing happened and just to make sure, I stayed until 4 and then I left. When I arrived at my house, there was a letter stapled to my door, written by Mr. Salazar. I'll reread what he said here. Wow, I have to say that I'm impressed. You managed to kill my best worker. It seems that you have already figured out my plan. The workers have normal shifts the first day, and then on the second day, their safe place is taken away. But you, you made it work. Come back to my house tomorrow as if it was a normal shift and we can discuss a reward. That is all. Sincerely, Mr. Salazar. I don't know what he'll do or what he'll give me, but I don't think I have an option to not go. Wish me luck. Now throughout my first two shifts, I was very calm, but after reading that letter, I was more than a little scared. I spent the day preparing, I hid a knife, a small gun, body armor under my clothes. I was going to be ready for whatever he was going to do. I arrive at the house and I enter as normal. The inside of the house is completely different. It's no longer a house but a chamber a tunnel down to the earth. I slowly walk down the stairs, ready to pull out my gun. I reach the final step and I arrive in a blue room with many monitors and a large man sitting in a chair. Hello Jeremy, I am Mr. Salazar. The man turned his chair around and I got a good look at him. He had a black goatee, balding black hair, and a dark suit on. Um, hi, what is this place? 
This is my viewing chamber. I spend all my time here, watching the house, monitoring my workers. He had a deep, scary voice. Well, what happened to the house after I killed that thing? Once the house lost its best worker, the other workers suspended their existence and the house would do nothing tonight. But if it doesn't have a new best worker by tomorrow, then the workers are released from the house's grip and they will destroy and kill anything they come across. So, why are you doing this? Because, Jeremy, it is simply the only way to contain these workers. Then, who's going to be the next best worker? Well, Jeremy, I'm looking right at him. His mouth twisted into a sinister grin. Me? Yes, you. Killing my best worker and touching that black liquid caused a transformation to begin. In the next day, you will see your muscles and meat disappearing. Your skin will become stuck to your bones. Your face will sag. Your eyes will turn black and yellow. Your teeth will fall out. And you will grow an unsatiable desire to return to this house. What? I'm going to become like that thing. Unfortunately for you, yes. You can leave for now if you would like, but it is inevitable. I stood in disbelief for a few moments. Was I really going to become that thing? I turned around and I ran out of the door. When I came out of the door, I was standing in front of my house and behind me, the house disappeared. It's been a few hours and I'm noticing that I'm losing my muscles and I have a really strong feeling to go back to that cursed house. My eyes have turned to dark gray, and I don't think that I can stay away from that house for much longer. I know that I can't stop what's happening to me. All I can do is just go back to that house. Wish me luck.